man came out with a fresh cut as well. That's, that's what you like to see. All I right. think everyone in Qatar got a fresh cut because we all thought there's going to be a lockdown. <laughs> yeah, so the thing is that with COVID, right, um, people, like, the cases have been rising and there were, like, rumors that uh, restaurants were going to get shut down again. Uh, we were going to go down into a lockdown similar to the UK and other countries. So what Omar and I did... <laughs> We saw it. We, 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 we banked up on the rumors. We were like, oh, no, we're not getting our hairs cut at home anymore. So we rushed to the barber shops. In fact, I came home late one day around 10 p.m. And instead of going home, I went direct to the barber shop. You guys were like, you know what? I'm going to risk my life for a haircut. It's too important. <laughs> so I should have gone bald again. You want to look like Tiago again? Salman Khan. <laughs> Salman Khan. <laughs> yeah well oh my God. Um, it turns out uh you know barber shops were still gonna remain open at a 30 person capacity but you know a fresh fade is a fresh fade what can you do so lucky man so no because no because you know when that first lockdown went in ali like everything closed for like months i yeah. cut my own hair like i think five times over How like the those... you cut your own hair man oh uh, <laughs> No, no, every everyone this has is to exactly who, every, this everyone, is exactly why yeah, everyone has exactly to improvise. We all risk our lives to go yeah, and, you know, get um, our haircut. It's worth it. Fine, but I can't find anyone. <laughs> Maybe you should have asked Ibrahim to cut your hair. <laughs> yeah, the fat prick was the one who cut my hair. <laughs> Luke Shaw. <laughs> Luke Shaw doing bits. Uh, uh, for those who don't know, um, Ibrahim is Ali's nephew. Who he loves very much very and very sweet. dearly, very and often sweet. plays pro clubs with us. He looks like he's like a walking Ronaldo. R nine. R nine. After <laughs> retirement. R nine in the middle of his Madrid career, you know. That's the one. Uh, he was pretty decent in the middle of his career, Madrid career. That's like 2004. Was, you're talking about. He was bad, but he was still so good. Imagine uh. if he actually took care of his body. Ah, man. Arnett was just unlucky with injuries, man. He did his knee, like, multiple times. Yeah, because he's uh, too fat. Man, man needs to hop off the burgers and the, and the models, you know? <laughs> uh, one <laughs> thing is uh, contradicting to the other. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see how uh, one of those things would affect his health. Because cause, cause everything, is, everything is linked together, you know? You, you get drunk, and then you... Uh, you call those bottles in, you burn some calories, and then you regain them in the morning again. I'm Especially pretty sure I'm pretty sure drinking gains a lot of calories as well. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And then but then you burn some of them, you know, when the bottles come in. And then and then in the morning you regain them. How again. do you how how do you know so much, Ali? Experience. With I was please, talking please elaborate. Our was, our, view, our viewers a, are dying to know how do you know so much I was a, of I was what happens when you get drunk time. and then you know was, when the models was, come in I, I was a footballer in my last life you know you know what i'm saying so here are two pods uh two pods <laughs> here at two house podcast only some of us believe in reincarnation um you can guess who a liverpool fan oh yes definitely who, who, who do you think klopp is re reincarnated into um as as Omar said that meme Heisenberg, Heisenberg. Yeah, I turned into a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> took him five seasons. It took him five years. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, to be to be honest, uh, Klopp's Klopp's Jesse is probably who is Klopp's Jesse FSG. Uh, probably like Mad Scooter. Probably Marcus. Jordan Henderson, not FSG. Nah, man, what's Jordan Henderson got to do with this, man? Come on. What's Jesse got to do with his downfall? Jesse, like, he was, he just wanted to smoke meth, mess around, <laughs> drop out of school, and leave. It was all Heisenberg. He was like, oh, you know what? Let's start entrepreneur. <laughs> because Let's set up a business. Because Jesse snitched. That's why. Snitches get stitches, you know? All right. But, you know, like, if you think about it, right? If Klopp ha hadn't come around, uh, Henderson probably would have, you know, gone down the same fate. Just chilling, you know, mid table, not really okay. achieving much. Just being chance, a waste, man. If I had the chance to sign Klopp for the next fifty years, I'd sign him. I don't give a shit if we get relegated. It's Klopp or nothing. That's it. 
I used to say something very similar. We'll about come back Mourinho. to that in one year's time. About Jose? Yeah. <laughs> about Jose? Yeah, Jose, fourteen, yeah, fifteen. Yeah, I drop, good. drop on a sword backwards for him, and now look. Yeah, well, you know I what? Jose and Klopp are not the same. Mm. Uh, only one of them has like three Premier League titles. <laughs> it's okay. Klopp is to Bundesliga against uh, against. Uh, <laughs> but this league, <laughs> that's the standard. Pep Guardiola. Now. Yes, Pep Guardiola. Uh, Guardiola wasn't in the Bundesliga at that time. Huh? He was, wasn't he? Was, no, he was, wasn't. He, was. No, he wasn't. He joined after. He joined after. He joined after. Remember, Pep got too tired of uh, working. He had to take uh, sabbatical <laughs> off work. Uh, and then the infamous Teddy quote Teddy of Teddy Jose came in. Second. Yeah. Uh, the infamous quote of Jose came in saying, um, uh, you know, you don't lose your hair when you do something you love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, right, probably the only manager who still has his hair after uh, being a manager for so long. Is Jose. Carlo. Oh, oh Carlo, Carlo, right. Yes. Carlo, of course. Yeah, yeah. All right, but man, that guy's an Italian Don. Come on. Uh, so was so was Antonio Conte. Yeah, but we've all transplant. seen it. it doesn't count. I I don't think he has a transplant. I just think he has a rug. He he's got a toupee. He doesn't have a transplant. Really? I no no. no he, he's he's actually got a toupee. He's he doesn't have a transplant. You, when you have a transplant, um, it's 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 not that big. You can't get that much hair. It, he's got actually got really? like he's got like a. Uh, Toupee on it. The, to, the toupees like are very obvious. Like you could see them like from like Sir, this. Uh, like, yes, Conte doesn't look that. That's why when you put like all yeah. of it, you can't tell. Mm. They oh they God. like really shave off the hairs and make it like very less. But and then they put a toupee on. Back. All right. So what were you guys talking about? <laughs> we're talking. Like... We're talking about how um, Antonio Conte. Do you, do you think? Do you think toupee? Antonio Conte has a toupee or did he get a hair transplant? He has. A, he got a hair transplant. One hundred percent. Are you sure? Oh, that's, a that's, that's a lot of hair. That's that's a lot of hair. Man, he he has he has money, man. He can get like five hair transplants. He can, but you know what? Sometimes, sometimes. Why only five? Sometimes he. <laughs> <laughs> actually, five is a lot. But yo, sometimes like it, it looks like he has a toupee. That's true, though. Sometimes yeah. it does look like that. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. What do you guys think? Well, I you know I was out of curiosity. I googled it. Right. I was like. Um, what is it? And apparently he did get a hair transplant. Yeah. But, um, it went back, you know, he kept losing hair again. Uh, so that's very interesting. Cause you know, you don't like these people with, um, toupees, you don't never see them with a different haircut. Yeah. They always have the same They're hairstyle the and, same, yeah. and, and contest the kind of same, like I haven't seen content in many different Haircuts, what, but, and again, yeah, I've probably are you saying Arteta? Are you saying Arteta has a toupee as well? Then, man's haircut no, since he was born, man. <laughs> <laughs> man came right, out right. of his mom's stomach and he had the same haircut <laughs> that he okay, has right now. Arte Arteta's hairline is um, zero variety. I mean, zero yeah, variety at all, but like, his hairline yeah, is uh, no, but permanent. like, okay, at Arsenal, you have zero expectations, there's no hair to what's the there, stress, because, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, What's the stress? The stress is almost getting I mean, relegated. I mean, Williams, Williams giving him stress now. But nah, then he's not. Because he keeps notice playing. how William has a lot of hair and David Luiz. Man, <laughs> all these shit players. <laughs> well, I think it's easier not to have stress when you're not thinking. Yo, guys, you know, you know Klopp has Klopp, uh, Klopp got a hair transplant as well. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he, he's had one as well. Oh, that's interesting. That, that's Wait, actually uh, really interesting. But but you know you know whose hair transplant looks amazing? Zerdin Shakiri. Yeah. Shakiri's hair Shakiri transplant got looks a, peak. Shakiri His got transplant a transplant? Looks peak, man. Yeah, bro. Oh, man, I gotta Google this. Why you call I go if I go that bald, I'm getting one. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm 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 researching Shakiri's uh, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> going to Turkey, getting that shit ASAP. All right, so Shakiri was I going all Rooney. Bro, Sha Shakir, 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 Shakir like was pull up a picture from uh, of him from 2019. You'll you know see. what? I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw yeah, it. He, he was he was going all Rooney. You know, he was like all of his hair yeah. from the yeah, side. Worse than like, like, Iniesta, Schneider, all these guys. The transplant <laughs> is perfect. You know, that transplant ended up perfectly. There you know, are so even, many cases of it going wrong, 
but his it's like full of hair i'm like i need that <laughs> man you know uh you guys remember andros townsend right yeah, yeah. He, got, he got a transplant as well this transplant looks Wait, peak as well man i think yeah, we are uh, recording i think yeah, we are. i think um there's also who is that who's that f1 driver lewis hamilton yeah i think he also got he was also going bald man he was his his, like, his, uh, his hair transplant was actually like you know uh actually i'm gonna google changed how he looked been that guy was like you know look like a back alley worker flipping lewis hamilton i, I no. don't wait <laughs> well that <laughs> needs to be cut out <laughs> flipping burgers <laughs> You know, you, you know who needs a hair transplant? Oh Sadio Mane. Yo, you guys, Abdul, he's getting right, his hairline Abdul, back. I think he Abdul, got a transplant. Abdul, you're right. He did get a transplant. He, a he transplant. did, right? And look at him. Look at him, man. He actually looks such an average man. Like, you know, he doesn't look yeah. like a big shot like, celebrity. He looks like yeah. someone you'd find walking down the street. I know most celebrities are like that. And we That's tend to build up images. Man, standing right? out. He doesn't need looks to be... He looks he, okay. He looks like a geography teacher without it. I'm not even kidding. He he looks probably Bro, the most boring he, person. He, he gets to hang out. He gets to hang out with Nicole Scherzinger all the time, man. Man doesn't need her for that. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, His speaks for it. Bring me huh? up to speed, lads. What's he got dolls, about? fam? You know where it's at. All right. Okay. Continuing Bring on hair transplant. Has anyone been more um, ob- like you know, obvious or public about their hair transplant? more than wayne rooney i will uh, be when i get one man <laughs> when, man when wayne rooney got it like the technology was shit so hey like his hair, hair transplant wasn't that good but like he didn't give a fuck because but mm. but you know still bald young bald angry uh young rooney hit different man yeah that guy had, that guy was different gravy <laughs> here's the thing about hair transplants though man they should really make it more accessible to men with different financial backgrounds because let's face the reality of the situation bro your hair plays a massive role on how you look there's no denying for, that for for a you guy know? all he has you can hair. literally go bro you can literally go from nothing to a straight 10 just based on your hair i'm not all right even I agree. that's true man right? you know I'm you guys you know that. elon musk even elon musk got yeah hair he, he got hair. and you know yeah. and it looks good i didn't even, even know he had one even conte didn't conte have one? Oh, we're just talking about that right we, we now. talked about conte and um oh, couple yeah. all the images. exactly but the thing is you uh, can't exactly. you can't have hair transplant like accessible to everyone it's a business at, at the end of the day it's not like, it's not water and bread if only but it was. you're thinking right it's 2021 right now surely man come on let's uh there are men out there suffering from this <laughs> your confidence <laughs> for sure there are that your and confidence takes a massive p like dip i'm speaking from my heart right now <laughs> man, you know what the thing is guys all they have is hair they have yeah. nothing else in life that's the only thing they can click on to and they don't even have that unless you're wow. one of those fortunate ones where you still look banging even without hair man, you, you know, know there the are is? a few people yeah but you know what the thing is even without hair like they probably look better with hair that's the, that's the problem, problem. Really. dude here's yeah, the problem dude here's the thing though you want me to give you a good example here's a good example you know what uh, I mean? nacho from better call song <laughs> exactly that's my man not only uh, that who, who's uh, the who's the main who's the main guy from prison break that's a really michael handsome schofield? man michael schofield yeah I know you look at him about, you yeah. look at him you look at him bald and you're thinking what a good looking guy you want me to give you another example man thomas tuchel man imagine if he had a full hairline he'd be glorious yeah. man Yo, hair that makes smile, a huge difference, you know oh, exactly, exactly, what about man doing the rock johnson right imagine him with hair <laughs> Yo, he had hair before. <laughs> no but, <laughs> but he would look like an absolute <laughs> softy like i mean can you imagine him yeah, with no, hair? you know what that's the thing like for some people for some people like what you can't imagine them with hair because they've had hair without they've been without hair for so long man so, you know like, another Ali, another wrestler spring to my mind, Steve Austin. Imagine him with hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That doesn't work. He's flowing, he's going like, you know, fringe coming in front of his no, eyes. No, 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 no. Like, that doesn't work. This man is a ball Vin Diesel from life. Fast and Furious. Yeah, even the Vin <laughs> Diesel. Oh, yeah. Has he yeah. ever had hair? I don't know. He better not have. Vin Diesel with hair. I'd like to 
see that, man. I, I Bro, oh all these, my god, it's shocking. You don't want to look at it. These men shocking. with hair will look so oh weird, man. Like, just imagining them, they look like aliens, you You're know? You're just so used yeah. to it. Dude, dude, the thing is, with The Rock, right, Dwayne Johnson, we have seen him with hair before, though. Yeah. Uh, during his earlier days, right? In the WWE. Yeah. Honestly, he looks better and without just hair. So, and you, yeah, he, exactly. He's one of those that looks better without it. I wish I was too, you know? Dude, the people, the men out there that look great even when they're bald, they've won. Yeah. They've won in they life. Won in life. They have no worries. They don't need to worry. They can still, you know, if you can still land girls with or without hair, you've got it, bro. You're sorted out. Well but done you, to you. But, but you know what the thing is? Peter, <laughs> Peter Crouch has hair, but... But like you know, <laughs> Ali, be why? careful. Ali has money. Ali, be but, careful. but he has money. Be careful, uh, Ali. <laughs> but but you know be what? He, he still has Abby Clancy, so it's it's light, you know. Okay. I, I, I think he said it himself. I think he said it himself. There's the only reason why I'm married is because I'm a football player. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did exactly. That. Well, I Ricky, oh, don't God. worry. Not I'm sure you have many great qualities that women all around the world and in your local area will be interested in. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky has that. Ricky I has a sword. So. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky has a sword that Betty oh. unleashes. That's unfathomable, oh you know. Oh, brilliant! brilliant. All right, Ali. That's a samurai. Oh. You get <laughs> At least if you want to unleash a lot of things, let's More let's like talk. Laser sharp focus. Let, let's talk about uh, you know Pep Guardiola <laughs> unleashing. Gundogan on he Liverpool. Great with hair. <laughs> nah, you know, you know uh, looks... Pep's Pep Pep didn't unleash Gundogan. Yeah. Klopp unleashed Allison. That's what happened. Klopp well, was like, are you, you, know are you trying to say uh, like this is the best version of Allison under Klopp? <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure he's uh, unleashing him. <laughs> he unleashed him, you but know, then, you know, you know, one of you our know, friends tweeted out right. Allison saw De Gea and just whispered into his ears, "You'll never walk alone." It's uh... <laughs> nah, dude. What Allison did, what okay, Allison dude. did, is way more horrible than what. Uh, oh De Gea yeah. Did, man. Oh yeah. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. This guy, this guy, this guy misplaces a kick and then tries to do a no look kick. Then what? What oh, the yeah, hell are you? His second and, mistake was way worse. Than had, way worse. Yeah. And, and and his first way mistake, worse. he had the chance to clear the ball twice, and he messed up both times. Yep. Oh my! Is God. it okay? Is it fair to say, um, Allison has outdone or I don't know, underdone my man Adrian, the best nah, Spanish nah, nah, goalkeeper? Nah, nah, nah. Because because what what Adrian did, what the circumstances were, we had way too much to lose, man. Right now we're shit. At that time we had way too much to lose. All right. So, no. Uh, here's my counter argument. Look at the chances that Liverpool missed versus Atletico, right? If the strikers had okay, yeah, look, no, no, hear me out. Let me talk. You're right. You're right. Let me talk. Let me talk. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, we need to to put that in. You look. You look at all those chances that Liverpool strikers missed against Atletico. Right? (laughs) There's a lot down to them. Yeah, yeah, yesterday, where we're where we're like you know, except for that penalty, which was very soft. You know, Liverpool had bare chances, right? (laughs) But and all right, and second half, City were on to them big time. Okay, man. Honestly, the thing is, the game. Look, the game. I know people are like, "Oh, city, this city, that." Look, the game was even at one one, and even at full time, even at full time, fifty. It was fifty fifty possession. They both had the same shots, like attempted. Like, yeah, to the naked eye, it probably looked like city dominated, but that was all due to Allison, man. That's it. Listen, I in, get, in general, I get, I get. You're a little bit hurt, and your feelings might be a little bit honestly, confused. But no, 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 I, I'm no, pretty I, sure, I'm pretty sure all of us agree that, like, all right, at, until like probably one one, Liverpool were still in it. But second half, Liverpool were played off it. Yeah, they played off it because of Allison. Until then, it was fine. No, even before you know, after City missed their penalty, like Liverpool were on top for at least twenty five minutes, and yeah. I told my friend like they have to score right now, otherwise yeah. City are taking this away. Man, all in all, it they was a pretty even that money header in the first half. He had yeah, to yeah, score he, that. Ma- he should have scored, scored that. that money should have scored that still. Yeah, but yeah, money scored that last season. Remember in the three one, yeah. he got the yeah. he got a similar mm-hmm. header, and he scored. Yeah. Man, that's the thing. When when it rains, it pours. Right now, it's pissing down on Liverpool, man. <laughs> it's not even pouring. That's the great Manager, one. It's people are taking a piss on Liverpool, and there's too many streams of piss coming down, and no umbrella can save them right now. That's just that's just what the fact is. 
is, is the Thiago it? memes are on fire. Oh, man, I want to that Tippy guy. tapping his way into what? Oh, what? <laughs> another loss. I don't feel. Man, look, I don't know why. You know what the funny part is? People are like, oh, uh, three starts. Thiago, three starts, zero wins. Liverpool. And then yeah. Liverpool, okay. and then Liverpool won two games. Drops. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then Liverpool won two games. And then people, people went back in, in their cave to their misses. I'm not taking Eagle. the piss. And then I'm not thinking of this. I just find, then, I just find the memes funny. I just no, no, find no, memes yeah. funny. I swear to God, they're man. funny still. Yeah, yeah, they yeah are I know. Funny. They're, Come on. they're they're funny still. Especially the Amir Khan one was pretty. The funny. Amir Khan one. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, that was like that was a like clap and Amitabh Bachchan. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> man, I love that Amitabh. <laughs> that meme was the best. Man, I swear, I was fuming right. I saw the Amir Khan one and I started laughing. <laughs> Oh. oh god but man look oh man that city game oh, hurt and pep god. you know what pep said in his pre- uh in his post match uh it would have been great if the yeah. fans were here what fans pep guardiola city has no fans that's why they're playing so well freaking I, th- I, I think he was talking about the liverpool fans just because of the no, atmosphere no, no. because the liverpool fans would have been pushing them on and maybe it would have been a bigger victory if pep actually won with the liverpool that's the fans thing. it would have been there would have been no victory if pep if there were fans man that, 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 that's a possibility yeah exactly <sighs> I, I remember Man, this is the first time this is i remember the first time. this is, is just 17 years this is just you yeah, know yeah. resonating robertson saying oh I'll come back to anfield 90 minutes is a very long time and then they got smashed out of champions league i don't want to hear this again you can't use ifs and buts like oh if there were fans if there weren't fans come on <clears throat> uh of course you've you played a whole year of football now without fans <gasps> I think yeah, that and, argument is pretty much out of the window now. And and uh, but you know what the thing is? You know what Liverpool's win percentage has been since that uh, Atletico Madrid defeat? That's when COVID. That's when COVID really like came into play. Man, Liverpool's win percentage is like fifty two percent ever since that defeat. So like, mm. man, fans, fans at Anfield are so crucial. It's man, not even at Anfield, just any other place. Like I saw this thing. It's like. Uh, Fans without Anvil is like just another like you know pitch in the world. That's all it is. So you the think reason why Anvil is what it is is because of fans. That's it. You talk about that. There there are <clears throat> big football teams playing on their training pitches. There are big football teams playing in their youth stadiums just because of COVID. So it's not like you know Liverpool only. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. But if you look, if you think, okay, you mentioned that fifty-two percent, right? That's a good <laughs> point. But a lot of that is skewed data because after COVID. Liverpool knew they had won the league, right? Yeah, yeah. They came out soft, all right? They, they <clears throat> in mentally, had won the league. They were just going to stroll on. Uh, there, there wasn't really another competition they were, like, in, all right? So they had a lot of ills. Start of this season, you guys faced with a lot of injury, okay? So a lot of that is down to that as well. It's not definitely just down oh, to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. The thing is... Man, the reason why, like, okay, in the beginning, I was getting really pissed off, right? Oh, we, we drew to full home, lost to Brighton, this, that, whatever, right? But then, like, but then when, when the reality strikes, when you wake up the next day and your mind is clear and you really, like, take things into, like, consideration, like, man, we had, we've had our three top center backs injured. Three. Ima- that's like, imagine uh, City without Stones, Diaz, and Laporte. And, yeah. and last year, last year, City didn't have Laporte and people were like, oh, uh, Laporte, Laporte's injured, Fernandinho's playing center back and this and that. Like they had one injury and they were, they got outplayed by Liverpool over 38 games. And that's a reality of life, you know? So like the thing is, it, it, this year, this year has just been tough. Like ever since we lost 7-2 to Villa, I was like, you know what, man? Like you just there's just this bad aura around like fo- around liverpool at that time and then uh, van dyke that everton and van dyke thing like that happened mm-hmm. then that's when you know like you know what it's it's raining it's raining shits over here like liverpool is screwed and then joe gomez gets injured with england like nobody know nobody even knows how he got injured was it just like a, a training training accident out for the season or what yeah, yeah he's he's out for the season wow and vvd has a chance and has a slim chance but like i don't think they should rush him back whatever man just see this season out sometime like somehow and like let's see what I, and you know what the funny part is our squad has been never been like this good ever in like 30 years we had so much squad depth at the beginning of the season we had like we signed jota tiago like we had shakiri on the bench man our squad was looking amazing and then all these injuries come and like everything goes to shit 
Corona, even COVID, like Thiago got COVID as well. Trent had COVID at the beginning of the season, Salah. before the season started. Salah got COVID. Mane has been on and off with injuries and COVID and all this shit. So, like, Allison, freaking the burger lover, he's been injured sometimes. <laughs> Wasn't he ill huh? before the Manchester City game? Wasn't he ill? Yeah, he City was City ill. He game. was ill. Maybe, yeah, he missed the game against... No, uh, the Manchester City game. Yeah, he missed the game against... Uh, against what Brighton, was it? yeah. Uh, Brighton, was it? Brighton, yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah. uh... I want to so, focus so on that's Mane a bit. A further context added. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to focus yeah, like, on Mane a bit. What do you think? Like, um, this season, he's just not been it, right? Um, yeah, is, yeah. Is this he, season, he's uh, I know, I know. I don't want to say it because it's not fair to any football player. Uh, but, like, is, is has he reached his peak? Is, is this just his downfall now? Because he's, listen, these days, footballers do, you know, uh, get their peak around 27, 28, right? Uh, Mane is 29, I believe, turning 30. How much do you think he's got that much pace, Man, that much fitness thing, to like, continue? He still has pace. He still has fitness. It's just that, like, man, I don't know. Mane, like, he, he was insane last season, right? So yeah. you can't you can just go to complete shit. And he's been okay. He's been, he's scored some crucial games for us, uh, for goals for us this season. But, like, obviously Salah's been outplaying him this year, but Mane outplayed him last year. But the funny thing is Salah still had more goals than him last year. So, like, Salah's just been, like, as an out-and-out goal scorer, he's been insane. But the problem is, like, uh, the system Klopp has built since the beginning, like, the focus has only been on Mane and Salah. Like, there, there are only goal scorers. Firmino was scoring goals in 2017-18, but ever since then, he's been he stopped scoring goals. So, like, the problem is we have no other goal scorers except for Mane and Salah. So, when they have a bad game or they go through a bad patch, all eyes are on them. Everyone's just like, oh, Mane and Salah, like, are they finished? This and that. So, it's just it's just the way things are, man. I think, like, Klopp, Klopp, Klopp was the best played his best stuff with Dortmund when he had Lewandowski and Gotze and he had Nuri Sahin and all those guys. So I feel like Klopp should go for a number nine in the summer, man. He should definitely go for a number nine. Like, that's what I'm saying. Somehow try to finish top four this year. If you don't finish top four, then... Because, man, honestly, top four looks, like, tough right now. Chelsea's on their ass. Teams involved, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like, Chelsea's on their ass. Oh, oh, never mind, Arsenal's 10th, but, like... Uh, Everton... Spurs, Everton, Leicester, Spurs, they're so they're, I, I right. believe I believe um, Everton are just three points off with two games in hand. Spurs yeah. are four points off with one game in hand. Um, Chelsea's one point behind us. One point behind. Yeah, which is so, crazy when you think about it. <laughs> crazy, man. Like, I think, and Liverpool were top at Christmas, and Liverpool's the only team to be mm. top at Christmas three times and never win the league. Yeah. They were they were top in 08 mm. 09 at Christmas. They were top 18 19. They never won the league, and then not, they've been top this year and they never won the league. They never win the league. In fact, so. <laughs> you want to say that again? Oh, oh, music to my ears. Bang music. Your ears. It's okay, oh. man. Uh, when was the last time you guys won uh, a major trophy that wasn't Europa League or FA Cup? Europa well, League. Just took out two. He just took out two major trophies. Both, both of them are major trophies. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's, let's those be honest. are major trophies, for me, bro. <laughs> for me, the only the only thing major that's considered major is the PL and CL. Th that's because that's, that's yeah, what Klopp focuses on. No, 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 no. Okay, look. Look, trophies are trophies, right? But that's only for Spurs because Spurs are trying to grind their ass for a Carabao Cup. Mm. <laughs> and, and they'll be happy for it. They'll be happy. They'll yeah. probably throw a parade. Yeah, that's good. Fair enough. But for the top teams, the only goal is the PL and CL, let's be honest. <clears throat> yeah, but then again, like with everything else, context is needed. You know, United yeah, don't get, obviously don't... going through a rebuilding phase and Liverpool are, you cannot deny the finished article. You know, regardless of their form right now, yeah, they're they're, much... they're a team capable of winning trophies. They're winners, you know. They have one of the, and man, if not you know, the best manager in the world. So it's obviously a different situation. Yeah, like you know what the problem was, man. I I go on Twitter and these Liverpool fans are freaking acting like pricks. Oh, cop out this. I'm like, yo, are you are you stupid? Like, <laughs> I would. This is dumb. This... Love that, by the way. I would love that if Klopp yeah. left. You guys would be. We'd be finished. I would, be finito. Oh, I would love Klop, that. Klopp out Benitez in. No, no, fuck no, Get no, Hodgson no. in. Oh, Rafa, no, yes. No, 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 yes. No, 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 no. Oh. no, no, no. I, don't want, I don't want Benitez Give in. Give it to me, he'll baby. Throw, he'll throw a fit like Give he did. Give it to me. He'll throw a fit again like he did in 08 09. 
Fucking hell. Oh. Especially with all these all this VR bullshit right now. But yeah, dude, mm. people like people need to calm down and like really think about like what's happening to Liverpool right now. You, they just need to stay calm and just see it see it out somehow. Liverpool and the fans. Like yeah, Absolutely. that's it, man. That yeah. the city the city lost hurt, but every it's gonna it's gonna be a long season and it's gonna be a painful one. And you know what? Let's see how it goes. Uh, just to quickly touch on that City game again, I do kind of agree with you that the scoreline did flatter City somewhat. Uh, yeah. The game was, was even, but I did feel as though that City be began to play a little bit more courageously. They began to attack a yeah. lot more in the second half. I felt as though in the first half, they were waiting for a game that never arrived. What I mean by that is maybe they were thinking that Liverpool would just... Um, go full on attack and probably leave spaces in behind. Whereas Liverpool actually looked pretty good in the first half, but in the second half they played more courageously. But a a, a mistake from the goalkeeper shakes the team to its core, and I, as a United fan, had to witness that two nights ago firsthand. Man, it, it just there's no if you can't have reassurance in the back, you you just feel so nervous, man. Nothing man. you do. You know, you know what the funny part is. Yeah. You know what the funny part is. It's not even like City mm. had possession at the time. It was Liverpool that had possession when uh, Allison made those two mistakes. So Liverpool had the ball. Mm. You know, they could have done whatever they wanted. They, they, yeah. they could have cleared it, but Allison, I don't know what happened. Maybe his his stomach started to hurt again. You know what? Maybe... Do you think? Do you think? Uh, do you think that Liver uh, that City actually closed the passing lanes really well, though? Because when you think about it, right? Um, granted. Uh, Probably the best option for Allison was either to boot it or to just shoot it out. Do you, do you see where I'm coming from? I yeah, felt yeah, yeah. Though, City. it was a com it was a it was a combination of both. Yeah, City definitely like were pressing like maniacs. They had like six, f five, six players like uh, like camping on our box when we had the ball. But yeah, man, like you don't expect that from Allison. That's the thing, right? You you just don't expect that from him. Mm. The thing with Adrian was leading up to that Atleti game. If you guys remember that FA Cup game against Chelsea he yeah, messed up already twice. in poor form yeah yeah he was playing like he was playing like a freaking mm. I don't even know what to say but like mm. it's better if you don't know? yeah <clears throat> that's why yeah. you know what <laughs> <laughs> all right but, um but, but I but I felt but I feel just one more I feel as though we can't leave that game without touching up on Phil Foden as well who I yeah. think is England's best young talent him and soccer are insane far him and Bukayo Saka, Phil Foden, aka Nafal Hawari, mm, both of them are know? excellent. Yeah, I mean, uh, has a last very season, future. last season at the Etihad, uh, uh, when they gave Liverpool a spanking as well. Yeah, four 0 Yeah, he was immense in that game mm. too. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah, it he seems like he he likes playing against Liverpool. <clears throat> he does. Everyone and, is playing against Liverpool, and and not only that. Apparently. And only that the game changed as soon as he was brought on the wing and Maris came out because that way he had less responsibility in the middle of the park and he could just begin attacking and pressing from the right hand side a lot more. He gave Robertson a little bit of a you know a lot of I wouldn't yeah. say a lot of problems, but he definitely gave Robertson a handful, especially for the goal he scored. I know you mentioned at one point that Allison should be doing better, but here's the thing though. With that goal, right, everything just happened so fast. He literally took a touch and then bam. Yeah, you know, because... all, all of it was, I don't know how to explain it, but it literally looked as if all of it was within one movement. Yeah, you know? because you know, I why? literally because think I saw Henderson, a blur and it went in. My man Henderson was playing mm. center back. He and he, he would literally just cut through it, uh, Robertson and Henderson, and then Allison sat down on his ass, mm. and then that's it. <laughs> I do think that was like a, you know a series of mistakes by Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robertson, sure. Henderson, and Allison. Like I, if just one of them had to get in the way, uh, that was an yeah. easy goal given. But um, Ali, all right, you. I just want to throw a stat at you, right, regarding my beloved XGs, right. Uh, Liverpool's XG was one point three one, and that too because of a penalty, all right. Yep. So okay. penalties are on 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Without yeah. it, they only have 0 0.5 SG, XG yeah. over 90 yeah. minutes. Yep. LK Gundogan alone had a 2.36 XG. Alone. All yeah. right. And Man That's City it. had 3.52. So even yeah. if you think about the errors, right, it clearly That's shows how thing. dominating City were. That, that's another thing, man. Like, 
I don't know what I don't know what's gone wrong after that. Like that, you know. Remember when we lost to three nil against Watford last season? Yeah. yeah, dude. Ever since then, and ever since against like that Atleti loss, man, it's like we don't know how to score goals anymore. Like, n- n- never actually uh, scrap that. We don't know how to create oh, chances can't. anymore. We don't mm-hmm. know how to create chances anymore. Like, we just yeah. look, we just look so dull, man. I don't know. I don't know what's gone wrong. I really don't know what's what's happened. But like, I don't know, man. Cops, cops tried a lot can of I things this year, of course. Can I say something? I'm not saying that it's completely down to him but through the addition of Thiago right his goal is to maintain tempo and to control the pace of the game whereas when Thiago wasn't in that midfield and all you had was uh, power and place players you'd say I felt as though Liverpool took more risks if that makes sense and Liverpool's style of play is literally all about taking risks within those areas of the uh, field if that makes sense they seem a little bit more reserved in their build-up play now uh, in comparison to the last two years where they just would destroy teams and teams would like literally spend the last two or three years trying to figure them out. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I'm not saying it's down to him. No, 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 you're right. You're but 100% maybe right. that personnel switch has changed something. You're, you're 100% right, man. <clears throat> Again, like... We talked. I talked about this so many times, but uh, VVD and Gomez are crucial, man. Uh, like, yeah, you guys, that, that you guys remember right. last year when uh, City came to Anfield when we had our full team? Man, we mm. outplayed them like a bitch. We made mm. them our freaking like. It, uh, it, it, oh my it god! Like, don't, yeah, don't. Man, <laughs> man, I swear, like they came, like we were. Man, uh, Klopp was playing tiki taka. Man, Klopp was taking the piss. I swear, he was taking the piss in that game, mm. and like Liverpool with v- man. Even VVD's presence is like a peak, man. It's just the way it is. It's because like, he can play that high line, right? And yeah, yeah you can play the uh, high line. Pressing is the exactly. greatest form of creativity. Yeah, according I to Klopp, yes, it's okay, man. Like yes. Liverpool just need to like see this season out. Fans need to freaking calm down. They just need to like, write the season off. Yeah, see what they yeah, can do with the Champions but, League or anywhere else. Yeah, Diego Jota and Naby Keita are coming back uh, this week, so maybe that that's, that's gonna that'll be a good change. For me, that's you know. terrible news. <laughs> <laughs> My man, Bobby can finally run on the bench. Freaking hell, man! Man looks like Prime Zidane one game, then looks like freaking Mario Balotelli the next. There's no in between. I swear, man, oh, he pisses me off. Stuff. But, yeah. but I guess there's no denying who the clear favorites for winning the Premier League title are right it's now, over, right? Man. They it's simply over. are leading Man United. the Premier League. Man like Rohan. Do your thing, baby. Man like Rohan. It's coming home. Man, man. like Number Rohan. Number 21. But, but... <laughs> 21 and 21, but you know? City are... <laughs> <laughs> but City are five points ahead with a game in hand. The way I see it, that's eight points. So might as well just write the season off. It's theirs. Aguero and De Bruyne are coming back. They have Laporte on the bench in case anybody else gets injured. I still I have mean, a feeling they're going to drop points. They have difficult games coming up soon. They have to play Spurs still. But and Kane and Son are a back. Lot of their Kane and Son are back. They just scored against West Brom. I know people are saying that, but man, mm. Pep... Like, City look like a different beast at this moment. Yeah, but if you exactly. think about it, for City, right? Spurs have always been a boogie team in the, over the last yeah. two seasons. Yeah. Last, last season true. as well, when no one expected it, Jose beat Wait. Pep, right? And this season yeah. as well, didn't really expect it, last and they season. lost again. When did... The did the one see? the 2 nil Bergwijn and Son. Season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ber- Bergwijn's debut. Oh, yes, Bergwijn's yes, debut. yes, yes. But that was a game... But that but that scoreline was very flattering for Spurs, by the way. It, uh, the way all most the most City. most score lines for Spurs against big teams is flattering. Yeah. The way the way they play. I mean, City were raining, were raining with chances, man. They were going in, hitting the post. I think there was one opportunity Gundogan skied it from literally yeah. in front of Loris. I'm. Oh, yeah. It was literally giving. It was making me reminisce of that one time United won against City three two and the Etihad, where City yeah. should have won eight nil in the first half it was literally the same game that was a this Radio city master team class. i think is going to be different yeah, yeah <laughs> no it's not is... a master class if the team should have won eight nil if, in the if, first if, half bro. man the thing that's the thing if jose wins it's a master class if he loses it's jose out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's actually fair there's there's, a, there's that's in between true that is true that is true 
yeah, but they do have a run of difficult games, but I still expect them to collect maximum points. They might drop a point against Spurs, but against everyone else. They, I mean, man, who am I looking... kidding? I expect them to beat Spurs. Spurs just can beat them, but yeah. in terms of who's going into that game as favorites, I have City as favorites for no, every game they're going into. I don't think gonna, that I don't game think last night was a Spurs statement. Anymore. Yeah. Looking, no, no, no. I don't looking think at so, their, man. they're uh, a different beast fixtures. this time around. They have Spurs, but also at Etihad, they have Everton at Goodison. Nah, that's gonna yeah, be exactly. all. That's actually might tough be game. a tough game too, because you never know what kind of Everton might show up. Yeah. Uh, and Everton, are, yeah, Everton mm-hmm. kind of like looked a bit muddly in the middle after their hot form in the beginning. However, it seems like they're back on track. They got Arsenal. Win. Sorry. Win for um, Arteta. Arteta. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say for who. The Fugazi <laughs> Pep will come clutch. No, nah, yeah, man. Saka's then... gonna score a brace. Come on. Who? Saka. <laughs> Saka. Man, like Bukayo, in it. Bukayo. <laughs> Bukayo Saka. Oh god. And also, man. I don't feel as though we're giving City enough credit here, man. Come on. Nah, they're nah, a City top, is they're a right world now. class team with dude, world class. Dude, dude, Pep. They're in the form of their life. It wasn't that their fortieth win in a row. Wasn't I don't that? Even know, that 14th? So. Nine 14th. In the Premier League. I think 13th Dude, or 14th. Yeah, in Premier League. Nine in the Premier League. Dude, yeah. Oh, Pep's, okay. Pep's use of Gundogan this this year has been insane. He's playing him as like eight, exactly. ten. Like Dude. he's playing him like as an extra striker almost. Man, like they have they're playing without a striker. Like we have a striker on the pitch, and it's like we have no striker. But these bad actually and they don't look have like a they don't even need one. Yeah, what the hell? And they don't man? even need one. They look better if but I'm if me, I'm not. Yeah. Even, yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm not even joking. They look better. For me, what? it's a defensive shape. The way I, a city track back, yeah, oh, as soon as man. they hit, get hit dude. on the counter, it's like two banks of four, just like Atleti set up. Dude, did you four, see? Four, four, two. Dude, did you see the way they were pressing? The, dude, as soon as Liverpool got the ball, they had like five players on one on, on the yeah. guy that had the ball, man. They did you guys every single that? Passing yeah. Game, yeah, there were like five players on one player. Like, they just swarmed yeah. him. That was like Klopp-esque. Yeah. Dude, say what you want about Guardiola. I know there's been this Fraudiola thing that we've been on, but nah, man. He's been... He's been getting it right. And when he's been oh. getting it right, you've been looking at it and thinking, whoa. Ironically enough, they Honestly, look more ruthless than when they had Aguero on the pitch. They look so unforgiving. But you know, you know what they're though? like, you thought you had a chance? No, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, but you, know, you know what the funny thing is? You want me to tell you a really like freaking weird stat? Like this time last yeah. year after 22 games, Man City are only four points off like better now at this stage of, of the games like i think they only had like four points more last year or four points more this year so like man that just they, shows they had how a shaky shit. start to the season though let's not forget yeah yeah yeah, yeah they had they, a shaky start to the season they had a shaky start last year as well they lost to norwich mm, so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I that remember was pookie that party yeah, yeah. Timo pookie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no, no doubt on whose favorites on whose favorite to win it now but yeah, guys, uh, since the Mank pricks are here, what are your thoughts on the Manchester United's performance against uh, the Evs? Uh, Tyler Ray is gone. I'll let, you, I'll let you take the honors. <laughs> wait, wait, Go Tyler Ray is gone? What were you yeah, saying? I, 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 want to, I'm gonna, I'm I want Rohan to... I want... I want Rohan to go in blasting before I become devil's advocate. Title you know? race, boys. <laughs> like, I'll have to be honest now. Like, all this talk of the title, like, with this defense, we're going nowhere. Any you know, on the fridge. With three points thrown away with literally seconds to go. We've done this so many times. We get ourselves into such good pos- good positions and we throw it away. Champions League, one point from two games, we throw it away. Right? Last season, we had to get, I think, three points against Southampton to seal top four early on. Southampton equalized last minute. Then, yes, um, the other day, Everton just hang on for a few more seconds. They throw it away. And where does this come from? The three pricks at the back. Lindelof, Maguire, and De Gea. <laughs> Maguire, man, this guy, I'm just, it hurts me to say, like, how did the club put an 80 million into this guy and make him the face of the club? This guy is trying to win petty wheels. free kicks. He's trying to win petty free kicks against DCL. He's di- remember, if you guys saw the game, do you remember when he just fell down and that uh, calvert go goes 2 on Oh my god, I remember this that. This guy is the captain of your team. He should be leading, leading by example. What is he doing falling over and just watching him run by? He had all what the time he... in the world to pick a pass back to De Gea, by the way. I'm thinking, what exactly. are you... Dude, there are players that are not good enough for your club and you think, okay, they should leave. And then there's players you hate. Maguire is a player I hate. 
I hate him with a passion, dude. I hate everything about him. The way he carries himself, he, he moves around like he's some hot shot. Man, you know your place. You're some bum from Sheffield United. You have four allegations in your fucking career. <laughs> You're a nobody. You've been given the captain's armband as soon as you came in. You can't even organize a fucking back line. Against PSG, we're conceding set pieces. Against Man City, we're conceding set pieces. He's playing everybody onside and he's holding his arm up <laughs> instead of defending. Dude, do, do you defending first instead of asking for offside? What is your problem? He, the, the, only time, the only time I've seen him defend well was, was for his sister in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> that was that Listen, was his best the, performance. Wasn't that his girlfriend? Oh here's the God. recurring theme. Here's the recurring theme with that. Here's the recurring theme with that center back partnership. Right, they're going to be. Let's face it. Um, who is our next game? West Brom, Newcastle. They'll probably look okay in those games, but that center back pairing is a time bomb, and you're no, and you know that eventually it's just going to explode at the one point you don't want it to. I think you get what I'm saying, right, Rohan? Dude, because there, are, there have been some you games... You never feel confident with these things. Exactly. You just now. know that if it's not in this game, it's going to be in a game where where we really need them Look, and eventually they'll just first half. Up. First half, Everton weren't that ambitious going forward. They just had like Calvert-Lewin and DCL running the channels. They tried playing those through yeah. balls, but they had no luck, right? Easy yeah. for Lindelof mm. to... And uh, Maguire yeah. to snuff out. Maguire Second too, half... Yeah. They start bringing one man extra forward. Rod Rodriguez starts joining the attack. With their first attack of the game, they scored a goal. Second attack, they scored a second. Third attack, they scored a third. What does that say about your defense? Three chances conceded, exactly. three goals. I love it. You, you, you know what's the sad thing about that game, right? I actually thought that offensively, that was probably one of our better performances. You could see that we were hesitant. We knew to we knew when to be patient. We knew when to latch onto things. We knew when to release the ball. Uh, don't get me wrong. Probably Rashford could have had a hat trick that game, but you cannot tell me that scoring three goals is not enough exactly. to win you a game. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Your strikers have scored three goals. For any other team willing to take that next step onto latching upon a Premier League trophy, that is more than enough. And I know you spoke about Maguire, but let's talk about De Gea. De Gea, man. Second. This guy, oh since last goodness. season, I think I can count David. three, four hands how many David he's made, man. I think David. him alone, he cost Please. us like 15 oh points with his mistakes last season. David. Also Dude, the semi-final. You know, you know right? Semi-final, the, mm. the the mistake against Watford, the kick against Del Calvert mm. Lewin at Goodison Park. There's so mm. many you can think of. Dude, parrying the ball into danger yeah. zones. There was a soft cross by DCL. He literally like he had no back. Dude, it, and he took it, 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 it was a kick. shot. There was no power in that cross. It was a shot. Dude, you know what I thought at first, right? You know what I initially thought when the when I saw that for the first time, I was thinking, okay, maybe De Gea was a bit unlucky there, and maybe uh. Luke Shaw should have been in position to block no, it. But then no, I no, thought, no. no way, man. Okay, first of all, I thought Luke Shaw did well to get back in the first place. And he's he's not Superman. He's not going to have the reflexes of a god to freaking block that shot. And then I thought, and then when I saw the replay, I'm thinking, David, Look, no. At the start no. of the attack, David. Harry Maguire is getting outpaced by six foot three, Calvert-Lewin from the halfway line. How can you let that happen? How does that wait, attack wait, wait, even start? DCL, DCL outpitched too? Yeah. Harry yeah. Maguire, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yo, DCL is quick. Goal. DCL is quick. This is relatively... Like, listen, any listen, listen. quick center back yeah. snuffs out that d danger easily. Okay, yeah, of course. But he like, let him Bai gets rid of that easily. But in a way, Let's Maguire did well. in that situation? Maguire showed him the outside. Yeah, he did well, though. He did well. The only option he had was to like just throw poke it towards the hair. And then DCL, there's no power on that. Just catch it or like parry it somewhere else. He literally just... Touches it and put it, puts it back into danger zone. You could. And once that happens, Dude. Just like, this nervousness thing you're talking about. Exactly. It just translates throughout the Dude. whole team. Exactly, dude. And if anything, right? If anything, I thought that United did well to take the lead again. Because yeah. after we after they equalized, we started yeah. playing, you know, the intensity like spiked. The heads didn't drop. A little bit better. Exactly, our heads didn't drop, which is some, which has been a recurring theme for us. But uh, I thought as though our, uh, I felt as though our attacking players began creating more chances that obviously Rashford could have and yeah, should have finished. Like off, an but at the same time, I've... 
Did you see? Okay, dude, Foden just, has better decision making than this you, prick. Dude, Foden is insane, man. Dude, Foden, Foden is three is years younger. He has less game experience than Foden him, and, is he, clear. and he has he has far more maturity than this guy. He can yeah, stick to being Foden a is clear. philanthropist or some shit. Uh, uh, <laughs> did you see that one time where Cavani played him through, and he yep. tried to chip it? Where I'm thinking, my life. I've seen that a million times. Man, yeah. Marcus's decision making is just. Dude, his decision making I... is atrocious. Yeah. I-, I was thinking, Marcus, just there? bend this in and we're good to go, baby. But no, he tries to chip it, and I'm thinking, no. Well, you're talking about the one on the left side, an... le- left channel. That's the one you're talking about, right? Where he should have just right. smashed and it across the board with his left foot. And the second one, he gets played through on goal on the right channel. Yeah, he just has to well, smash it from Bruno. Again. From Bruno, right? Yeah, from Bruno, right? Yeah, and he just he decides to take a little spin, right? That spin, okay, fair enough. Maybe the angle was too tight. You spun. Then there's mm. a straight mm. pass to Cavani. Just play it square. Why are you trying to score by yourself? Mm. There's three players on the goal line. Play it square to Cavani. He has an easy tap in, but no. Yeah, Cavani was. Open. He wants all the fucking glory, as usual. I feel glory I feel sorry for Cavani at too. times because because I feel I feel I as though swear, for, for a charitable person, he has the Cavani. biggest ego in the whole team. Who Rashford? Yeah, dude. I swear he starts around like he's some hot shot, but he like he's so selfish in his own little attacks. It's because man. he's been feeding kids. That's why maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's getting like, oh, to his head. I'm a I'm an MVE. Maybe Marcus all Rashford. that attention. Maybe all that attention is getting to his head. Who knows? Yeah, word. Maybe man, you could. I you actually never feel know. sorry for Cavani, man. I actually feel sorry for Cavani because a lot of eyebrows were raised when we signed him, but he's been absolutely class. Granted, you could say that he should have scored against Arsenal. But ever since then, man, he's been so clinical. You could see he has such a dogged work rate. He's always available to receive a pass and link up play. That what he and he made a tackle and got himself fouled. Remember when it was the 94th minute and De Gea was going to kick it, and I think the referee really should have blew the whistle. That was a foul that Cavani won by tracking back and pressing. That was a performance. He should have gotten a man of the match performance where we won, you know. But at the end, but because of our back line, which is Setting so down unreliable. Once again. But uh, again, the man of the match for me, down, a contender would have been Mason Greenwood. Like he may not have been getting the oh, goals he was recently, excellent. but his all round play has developed yeah. so much. Do you think excellent. he has? Do you think he excellent. has better decision making than Rashford? Absolutely. I'm still, he's still a little Absolutely. bit raw because I, I, I saw him make he, that mm. solo run where he. Yes. Almost scored, and he should have mm, squared it to mm. Bruno. He's still rough around the edges. Squared it to Bruno, right? Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. It's a training ground thing. They really okay. need to work on okay. this. You know thing, what? This man. is probably they, a better question. Selfish. Do you think? Do you think he yeah. can become a better player than Rashford at like? Do you think he's gonna be a better player than Rashford at twenty three? What um, I can say though is he's a better finisher than Marcus Rashford. Yeah, that's he's a sure. better finisher in my opinion. You get you get Mason in the positions that Marcus was in. I think Mason is scoring those. Probably. Yeah. He's. He's our second best finisher after Cavani, in my opinion. And man, the, That's the way I see advantage it. he has is like he has a really good weak foot. He has like a five star weak foot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. That, that there was. A, I, I remember what you were talking about, Rohan. He got himself into a. He dribbled very well to get into that position in the first place. It was from our halfway line. Yeah. He beat two of their players, and that was excellent. I don't know anybody else that can do the same thing in mm. our team at this moment in time. And another worry for us is the fact that Paul Pogba came off injured. I felt as though that was a turning point for us because Pogba was really controlling the tempo. He was yeah. dominating that game. You could see what Ole was trying to do. He would have Pogba switch play from for either yeah. to Luke Shaw or to Aaron Bissaka, and it was working because Everton couldn't get close to him. He was too strong, too quick. And as soon as Fred came on, you're thinking, oh, no. <laughs> you know my thoughts oh, on dear. Fred, man. I'll never rate the guy. Yeah. Is Fred actually Brazilian? Biggest stripper yeah. of all time. <laughs> I swear. It was his job to mark oh, Rodriguez on the edge of the box. And he just fell over like mm. the pussy he is. His, you his... see him trying to stick his leg out. I'm like, bro, you're a midget. Man, Stop it. He's shite, I swear. Fred, waste my, 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 oh, my nephew God. has better shot power than him. Oh, yeah. That shot. 100%. I forgot about that oh, shot. Oh, my God. God. I forgot you? to mention well, that shot. Bro, I swear. He has the worst shooting in the whole team. And you know what triggers me the most? Whenever we have a free kick on the edge of the box, this guy has the audacity to stand near the ball. This guy has the audacity to stand near the ball. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you going? Go back to the halfway line, man. <laughs> you, know, you know, I read a press Go back to being a dog on a leash. Just... 
you know, we were speaking about Fred, right? And you're thinking if only Pogba played. And now Pogba's there's gone. worrying signs because Ole, Ole mentioned that he could be out for weeks. And as soon as you hear that, you're thinking, oh, no, here we go. I, I actually That's look up the uh, fixture list. Competition. Thankfully, um, mm. he's only missing games against West Brom, Newcastle, uh, West Ham in the mm. FA Cup. And the two games against mm. Sociedad in the Europa League. And he said Those he'll be back the for the we Chelsea eat. game uh, yeah. in the Premier League. So, do you guys do you think do you guys think uh, Ole should go for the Europa League? Nah, I couldn't care less about the competition. No, Premier League, yeah, sure. same. I I under mm, I understand where Juan's coming from. But now that the league's I most likely they, gone, focus on finishing second. Mm. Like, make sure we have Champions League through top four. Europa League, you know, we're bottlers. We're gonna mm. bottle the semifinal. In, but there's like, no Sevilla. Exactly. There's no Sevilla, so like you never know. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> I don't Listen, know whoever we might Everton bought it weren't Arsenal that and... great. <laughs> Everton, yeah, Everton weren't that great tonight man. either. Dude, I turned Everton off the TV. only came alive in the second half, in my opinion. You could, uh, granted, you could see what they were trying to do in the first half, but we still, you know, what's frustrating, right? We very rarely concede goals from elite passages of play. Do you know what I'm saying? It's I understand that teams tend to concede because there was a mistake in it somewhere, but. Your defense is acting as damage control. But when you're the ones that are doing the damage, something needs to be repaired real quick. Otherwise, it's just the damage is just going to deepen even further. So if I was at Woodward and God, boy, do I wish I was at Woodward, man. The th signings I would have made, there were rumors about this Sergio Ramos signing. And I know a lot of people laugh at it, right? And listen, it's, uh, you know, hypothetically, it's never going to happen. But if it does happen, it actually fits what United have always strove for, a commercial signing. Sergio Ramos is one of the biggest names in world football. United are more than willing to pay his wages. Sergio Ramos in instead of Harry Maguire. Oh, baby. Oh, please nah, you give know, it to me, Dad. Even if, even if Ramos, I want my alpha male in. Even if Ramos comes to United... Uh, I think he's going to replace Lindelof or Bailly because, Mag man, the problem the the problem is you guys spent too much money on Maguire to bench him. It's just on a Maguire. psychological thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, it's yeah. a psychological thing that like, all is going to be like, man, fuck, we spent so much money on him. How can we bench him? Like, you know. So but here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Sorry, Ali, but here's the thing. Didn't Chelsea spend seventy five million on Kepa? That's Chelsea, though. What, look what's happening but, to him right now. Yeah, you have to be... That's the thing, man. Sometimes you have to be ruthless. Like, Klopp needs to be with James Miller. Mm. He needs to I fucking sell James Miller. The buck falls with Oli on this one. Oli has spent 150 million on the defense over two seasons. And we've conceded 30 goals in 23 games. I mm. think it stems from the top. Like, Maybe. the choice of signings he's made. He can't organize a defense. You know, Do you guys think Aaron we, we even get protection. We, we even have a double pivot in place. To yeah. protect our shed defense, and we're still conceding three goals at the back. What does that say about the manager? But do you guys think uh, Aaron Juan Bissaka was a good signing? Um, at the time, I on paper, on paper, yeah. it seemed like a good signing. You know, fifty million mm. for a young English right mm. back, twenty-one yeah. years old. He's he's had mm. um, a good career at uh, Crystal Palace. He can tackle. My concern was always about him going forward. I'd never seen him put in crosses or assist. So. Obviously, at United, he's going to find himself in the final third quite often. Honestly, he's been he's been playing pretty well this season, man. Like he he's been like attacking wise, he's putting some he's putting some decent crosses. The last few games, yes. The last yeah, few but, games, but yes. I'll agree with that. There's still a lot of deficiencies in his game. Yeah, like for sure. he's a target for teams. He's like a press trigger. Basically, when the ball yeah, goes yeah, to yeah. the right channel, for sure. teams take it as a trigger to start pressing, and it, we lose the possession so many times. Man, he's more of a center back. Ball. In my opinion, he's more, he, he's more, like, his attributes are more of a, like, that, like, a center back, you know? His his profile is like a center back, but he, he plays right back, mm. so. I, no, with Juan Bissaka, I think he's very reactive. That's why he has the best slide tackles. Yeah, yeah, he is, he is. He can't position That's so true, man. properly. He even actually like is very reactive. On set pieces and sell, uh, others, other stuff, on crosses and whatnot, he's not marking his man properly. He's always yeah. lying on that last challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that makes true, it look that's more true. extravagant than it actually is. That's so true. Like he's not, he doesn't have that footballing yeah. IQ, you could say. Because we've heard mm. before that he used to be a winger as a kid. He wasn't a defender. Mm. Right? Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, he was a winger. So he, he doesn't yeah. think like a defender when it comes to. Isn't that the story with every fullback? <clears throat> what? What's up? Isn't that the story with the, every fullback in the world? <laughs> Field no. winger. 
failed center back. Ironically enough, a lot of them are like that, but not everyone. Yeah, yeah, failed center backs. Yeah, and and that's another problem that I saw. You were talking about football IQ, and that's another thing that I felt is still separating United from the teams that end up winning the league is in game intelligence and what by mean what i mean by that is be smart during yep. the game manage the game you're three two up there's only a few minutes to go just go to the freaking corner flag and play yep, the game out man. nobody that cares he yep he played it down the middle remember um mm. in the 90 93rd minute wan bissaka had the ball yeah and instead of running towards mm. the corner flag he started to build another attack and he gave the ball away Exactly. And then, Dude, sorry to interrupt, guys, but I have to yeah. go. You guys, <laughs> you guys continue right. to talk. I'll see That's you guys fine. next time. Peace All out, right. everyone. Take care, like, subscribe, Peace. enjoy. Peace out. Right, take, take care. care. <laughs> take care, Ali. But yeah, and then that academy scrub comes on, gives away a needless free mm. kick, and that's basically an opportunity for Everton to put eleven men into the box. You know, just show him the outside; I... he'll run mm. into no man's land, yeah. and they lose possession. That's yeah. it. Attack's gone. I I I blame that slightly on Oli. Because first of all, uh, exactly right. I don't think Axel. First of all, didn't. Uh, first of all, I didn't really think that Axel needed to come on. Second of all, if we're gonna bring anyone on, don't bring on Axel. If anything, maybe bring on a Matic or something because that's what he did in Goodison. Someone experienced during the, yeah, someone experienced, someone that can know what to do during the closing stages of the game because you saw what Matic was able to do. During the first time we played Everton this season, he came in Goodison and he intercepted a ball that enabled us to finally score that third goal. He initiated yep. that counter attack, and just someone to cool our heads a little bit, you know, um, yeah. an experienced figure. Axel should have never came on. That's why I thought, and now he's going to be subjected to more unnecessary racial abuse from the yes. fans. And you're thinking it's it's unfortunate, but. Granted, don't get me wrong. It um, he should have done better for that challenge, but he never should have came on in the first place. You could see that his confidence is definitely going to be the best right now, and you're throwing him in the firing line when you do something yeah. like that. So yeah, and just in terms of the bigger maybe, picture, John, I think mm. this whole mentality thing at the club it stems from the top. If you if you heard what Oli mm. said in the post match con- um, mm. conference. Yeah. He said, we mm. shouldn't be in a title race. Uh, we should just see when mm. we end up at the end of the season. And when mm. players hear that, what do you think goes through their minds? You know, players like Pogba, winners mm. like Pogba, Cavani, who've been winning league titles um, in their time in France and Italy. They must be looking at their manager and going, wait a minute. I thought we were in a talent mm. challenge. We were leading the table uh, last month by six points. And now you're saying we're not in a title race. What's that supposed mm. to uh, show to the other players? So... I don't but, know, man. Yeah, the way the way yeah, the way the way I saw that post match interview was first of all, I think it was only admitting to admit our deficiencies and just to admit that the reality is, I mean, let's face it, we we we're definitely not there yet. We're not a Man City, yeah. nor are we a Liverpool. But at the same time, I think it was just giving a traditional answer. And what I mean by that is, last season Klopp was ahead of the league by eighteen points, and they were questioning him after every single game. So Premier League uh, winners. And he was just thinking, let's take it game by game. Let's see where we are by yeah. the end of the season. It's a very stereotypical answer. That's the way I think Oli yeah. handled the situation. And to be fair to Oli, I do think that during post-match interviews, he conducts himself very well. He very rarely gets too excited after a win, nor does he get really you know, his mood doesn't necessarily always sway that much from yeah. the average one. And I do think that's a good thing to have. And nor does he ever rat out on our own players, which I think yeah. has been detrimental to which you could see from previous managers that have done it. So I think he just gave a stereotypical answer, but I get where you're coming from. United, I think it's it's the similar frustrations that I don't know if you saw what Jamie Carragher talked about, but it's as if that unless we have the belief to do it, we never will do it. Yeah. You know, Carragher is a Liverpool fan, man, and he's frustrated at us not killing yeah. Liverpool and Anthony. He said or that killing we're Arsenal happy to be here. We're basically happy to be in and around mm. the mix. Instead Whereas of like, really, we should be, we want to take over. 
you know yeah stamp your authority you had so many chances mm. in the um liverpool game at anfield you know liverpool mm. were playing with a ma- makeshift Definitely back win, line yeah. take the game to them you know stamp your authority score three four goals mm. just go gung ho because our attack is mm. way better than our defense we know that so why not try and outscore Easy. the opposition at arsenal mm. nil nil again mm. you know mm. not going for the kill arsenal were without four of their best players saka obameyang um mm. a couple of others i mm. think um, gabriel and so, so forth so yeah again yeah, man yeah, yeah. it just comes back to the point that i think we reached the ceiling with oli we have to get a new manager in which i don't think given how we we and the wood would operate if we get top 4 i probably think mm. we'll stick with them that that's the that's the other uh sad thing is that oli has definitely punched above his weight do you know what i mean the way i see it is he's a kid doing his internship and it just so happens that all the employees he's working with are totally on board with having this kid you know and don't get me wrong um the way i see it the spirit in the club has never been better um yeah. when i compare it to our last few managers it's never going to be only losing the dressing room that's for sure you know yeah. it's going to be very i think it was it's going to be very similar to the ancelotti situation where actually all the players liked ancelotti in real madrid but at the same time our board is not as ambitious as real madrid's they're not going to sack oli if he makes top 4 and you're thinking what will get oli sacked because that's the thing at the same time you're thinking can you if we can get a manager that's capable of coaching our attacking players to combine with each other you know um to create more chances like we did in everton maybe we could be a better more ruthless force or we could get someone to coach us to defend better Yeah. It, it, it's ifs what's in maybe's man that's the sad it's, thing it stands yeah. from that's the top the you ask yourself what's the mm-hmm. ambition of this club what are the owners looking for mm. do they want the yeah. team on the pitch that's to win league thing. titles or they just want the champions league mm. money what's the end goal yeah. here and last month we exactly. saw in Darren Fletcher into the co- into the co- coaching team i just thought mm. to myself what mm. has this guy done in the game why to be yeah. coaching at man united mm. you know this culture we've had the mm. club for a while now is just mates joining together all these ex managers right yeah yeah like where's the club going to go with these interns basically mm. lead, leading the, leading the team so i don't know man we we it's, want it's people at the absolute best in what they do you know like when i watch man city for example and i see how ruthless they are in their decision making right yeah. and how you know that every single decision they make is just for the sake of their football if anything they yeah. very rarely make commercial signings if that makes sense yeah. ruben diaz if i'm being honest with you i never heard of him i never heard of ruben diaz until i saw him and that just makes you think wow why didn't united think about getting this guy you know young excellent think if he was playing instead of maguire two nights ago you know yeah. and thing is it's a shame we man, both because, spent hmm. similar amounts of money but basically they've spent it but smartly. you can see we've the difference in quality right yeah we've just thrown it around with no plan on a, with no transfer strategy we've just been buying english talent for the sake of it whereas they've been looking in the foreign markets looking for talented players exactly. that can grow in the next few years and win them league titles whereas we're just going for the commercial harry maguire big name from leicester city scored two goals at the world cup and so forth you know exactly so, i don't know man there's a lot of issues that need to be fixed at this club do you think there's progress though do you think there's do you think we're headed in the right direction compared to last time in terms of think, shifting uh, out the deadwood mm, that's for me that was the mm, biggest the biggest thing like i have to give all the credit for that there were far too many deadwoods that were brought in during um LBG's time was the likes of um what's his name Fellaini uh Valencia Darmian Darmian the, the list yeah. goes on you know just shifting them out mm-hmm. all these bang average players but the thing is we've shifted them out but we've replaced them with more mm-hmm. average players mm-hmm. you know Harry Maguire is not the world's best defender let's let's just say it how it is let's stop beating around the bush mm-hmm. he's not going to lead us to a league yeah time. absolutely yeah you know mm-hmm. so Honestly, after this game, I'm just thinking, cut your losses and sell him for 40 million and buy another center back. Buy two actually, mm. buy a whole new partnership. Because mm. if we want to challenge for league titles, that's mm. my ambition here. I don't want to finish next season mm. third place or fourth place. I want us to challenge for league titles. Buy someone in their prime, not a youngster who's going to take three years to develop. Buy someone 
who is in a similar age bracket to Bruno and is approaching their prime. You know, whatever whoever it is, that's the scouting mm-hmm. team's job. Find a certain cer- center back who can do a job and win a league titles. Hmm. But, but but I think the positive thing to say though is that at least now we can be in the conversation if that makes sense. I remember a few yeah. years ago we were thinking, "Oh my god, top 4 again. Oh my god, Europa League places again." Whereas now it does feel good to at least be in that conversation where we're thinking, "Okay, we just need that little bit more and we could actually be up there." Do you, you know, think that's do you the think next thing? With this squad, another manager could get out more. Here's the thing though. I don't um possibly but I can't think on the top of my head just who do you know what I mean do you have any names in mind like who the, the only that's one what I mean. I'm not saying yeah is Nagelsmann is Nagelsmann probably mm. yeah. because the way he drills his team right you can exactly. see there's a pattern there yeah mm. and he seems like a visionary exactly. like an up and coming pep or club you know he has a certain idea of how football should be played whereas with all these yeah. just freestyle football mm. where like for example mm. If you're Rashford on the left wing, right, you receive the ball. Mm. The picture in front of you is different every single time you receive the ball. Bruno is sometimes in the middle, or sometimes he's on the right flank. Luke Shaw would overlap sometimes. Sometimes he won't. Mm. So I don't know. Sometimes yeah. that plays on the players' minds on whether what decision should, should I be taking. You know, in the final third, it's all left mm. up to them. And when you leave Rashford yeah. Yeah. without a plan, and you leave, let him do as mm. he as he pleases. He's gonna run to dead ends. It does feel like that. Take, yeah. Take mm. take shots when he should be passing. Take um, pass when he should when he should be shooting. So I don't mm. know. We need a coach that can drill patterns into this team, both going forward and at the back. Similar to Man City, you know, they have a shape which they can stick to, and they have a picture in their mind. He, like whenever the winger Sterling receives the ball, he knows that the fullback will be overlapping, and I can just play it out wide without even looking. He doesn't even need to look. He's gonna play it out wide. Stuff like that, you know. We need to have a pattern going forward because our three goals against Everton. The first one, brilliant cross from Rashford, Cavani at the back post heads it in. Second goal, Bruno Second long goal, shot. Second goal, Bruno just a wonder goal. The moment yeah. of brilliance. Third goal, set piece yeah. from McTominay. Did you see any goals over the past few weeks where we actually created something that had a pattern of? Play? But at the, yeah, but at the same time, I do feel as though there were plenty of moments where we should have scored. And we did create a passage of play that led to it. Do you know what mm. I mean? For I'll give you an example. Uh, do you remember the Cavani header uh, during Fulham? That was a that was a great passage yeah. of play that led to a chance. There was Cavani's two misses against Arsenal. That was a good passage of play as well. Yeah. There was the Pogba shot that got uh, saved by Allison in Anfield, and there was yeah. the Bruno shot that got saved by Allison as well. Listen, yeah. I'm not saying that all is a visionary. But man, this is the first time in a while that I've actually not felt that it was a chore to watch United. Do you remember yeah. when it was under LVG or Mourinho where I thought, oh my God, what on earth am I going to see today? Yeah. It's at least good to see that we are playing attacking football. But at the same time, just like you mentioned, imagine if we did get someone like a Nagelsmann and see if he could take this team to the next yeah. level. Because if we're sitting on... Are, we're still second place, right? Yep. If, we're sit, if we're sitting on second place with a PE teacher with someone that's been regarded as a kid on mm. his internship what could we achieve with an elite manager man and this is and this squad right i feel i still feel as though it's punching above its weight imagine if we actually get capable elite players in imagine yeah. if we replaced fred with an elite defensive midfielder imagine if we replaced maguire with an elite center back imagine yeah. Don't get me wrong. I respect Cavani for what he's done, but he doesn't have many years left of his career. Yeah. Imagine if we got an elite number nine up top. We well, could let's not forget the dangerous. goalkeeper. He's a big one. Ab- goalkeeper. We need a new goalie. Absolutely. Absolutely. That should be the first Absolutely. goal of business in the summer. Absolutely. 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 De Gea, I, I love the guy. I appreciate what he did. I mean, Where's What I mean by that is... Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> What I meant, what I meant by that was, you saw him. You saw him come in in 2012. You saw him yeah. arrive as a boy, and he's now a man. And mm. you built an affection for him because, let's face it, there were plenty of times where he's made saves, and you're just scratching the top of your head and thinking, "Holy crap, man! How yeah. on earth did he claw that one out?" Right? 
But yeah. now that he's costing us games, you're thinking, sorry, David, man, I think time's up. Have you, know, you noticed this so thing many with more De Gea? Times you can, mm, Have you noticed mm. this thing with De Gea whenever um, there's a chance to like rush out and close the angle down? He, sort of, he does, and he slows down a bit, sort right? Sort of just hesitates and pussies out at the last second. If you, if you know, are you talking I, about the DCL chance by the end of the first half? Yes, there's many. Like, remember the Wolves one where the, the meme of Jones and Smalling, like in slow motion. If you just look, watch De Gea. He doesn't even like throw himself at the ball. He just stands there and just last second he just shies away because he's afraid of getting hurt. You know those chances he Do can you know stuff De them out so yeah. easily. That's five ten goals exactly. taken away from our considered goals at the end of the season. Exactly. Because what De Gea is and always will be is just an elite shot stopper. Yeah. You know, he has he's not a commander. Reflexes of a cat, but he's not a commander. He's not a Manuel Neuer that can yeah. impose his presence. You know. The attackers feel it. You saw it um, in PSG. You saw it in the Champions League final. How mm. I've never seen someone dominate from the goalkeeping position yeah. until Manuel Neuer in that yeah. final. You're thinking, oh my God, look at that man making himself huge, mm, going yeah. in, him playing as a sweeper keeper, man. I've never yeah. seen it before. That's the kind of yeah. keeper we want. Yeah, you know, I know. And, I know. Allison, like he made two big errors yesterday, but Allison himself. But is he a has very qualities that De Gea doesn't. You know, he exactly. has an aura about him. You know, City have missed exactly. the last three penalties against Allison, because exactly you know, for a reason, by the mind. way. Yeah, because when goalkeepers mm. have that aura about them, attackers, yeah. they get double minded. Mm. They start to second guess themselves. Even in penalties, they get scared Absolutely. and sky it. Established players like Gundogan and De Bruyne miss their big penalties. And both legs against um, Liverpool, so in that sense, I think De Gea is severely. He doesn't have that commanding presence, and attackers exactly. aren't afraid of him. That 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 Allison that game for Allison was just a one-off anyway. You know yeah. he's not going to repeat the same mistakes. Yeah, that was the first time I've seen him make any. Whereas De Gea, it's been a recurring theme for like how many seasons now? Even the near. I mean, I thing. can just take it. Mm. He has beaten at the near post so many times. I don't know why. Remember but that I goal think he was conceded at against Sevilla like, in the round of sixteen. Sorry, Ron. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Remember that goal you conceded in the round of sixteen against Sevilla? Should he have? Mm. Should he not have done better there? Round of the sixteen second, or the second goal they scored? Um, oh, the the Sevilla round of scored. sixteen. It was a Champions League. Champions League one. Okay, Champions okay, League okay, one. okay. Yeah, yeah. He got yeah. beaten at the near should post. Should he not have done better there? Yeah, he and got a weak hand on to it. Yeah. Honestly, we should keep the same energy we do for Kepa, for De Gea. Like, if we're gonna make fun of Kepa, we gotta absolutely. Make fun of De Gea and we do, and yeah. the United fans on Twitter have. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't know who's in the market right now, but next season go out That's there, the and even because Dean Henderson, I don't think he's ready for this level. No, but you watch no. that leg against Liverpool in FA Cup. He conceded two mm. needless goals. When one went through his legs, he should have closed them. And he just looks hesitant all around when he receives the ball. Like he's a kid who got his first chance to play professional football. And dude, it's like on his debut as well, he literally gave a goal away to Sheffield, remember? When he passed oh it my God. straight to their... Oh my God, I forget that one. Yeah, dude, yeah, 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 that one. on his debut, as soon as he did that, I just thought, yo, this guy's shaky. This guy's shaky. Because as yeah. United fans, right, the general consensus is if they're one of our own, they're good enough to start. Whereas I'm thinking, let's... Take a step back and actually yeah. try to assess the situation. How many of City's players have regarded themselves as one from the academy besides Phil Foden? And when you do come from the academy, you better be as good as Phil Foden. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the standard you should set. Exactly. You should be absolutely world-class if you want to make it in this team surrounded yeah. by elite foreign players. You know? Exactly. Even if they do make it into the team, they should be at best squad players. They shouldn't be starting. Absolutely. You know, they shouldn't be starting straight away. Basically, all of this stems from lowered standards over the years. People have lowered their standards yeah. as to what the quality of yeah. the United starting level should be. Like, if you want yeah. Academy Scrubs starting for your team week in, week out, you know, might as well wait the next 15 years and your next week title won't come. Like, so, Twan yeah. Zabi, let's be honest, let's stop beating on the bush. He's not he's great. Not he's, he's not he's going not, to he's, be. No, I, I've never been emotional with this guy. 
Mm. Exactly. It's just fans from Manchester that are like, oh, you're local lad and what and what not, you know. Brandon Williams, Twanzi, just cut your losses, man. Don't give them extra two, three years. Sell them on, cut your losses, move them forward. You know they're not good, good enough. Just move them forward. Because the thing with the center back position, right? It's a it's a position of you have to be honest with yourself where yeah. you need to see the center back position is one where you're where you're looking for a player that you know is just almost incapable of making mistakes, yeah. you know. Okay. It's a position um, where you literally have to be yeah. flawless. You might be surprised to hear this, but, but um, Ruben Diaz mm-hmm. is the same age as Twan mm-hmm. I know, I know that. I think I posted that in, in our chat somewhere. Yep. And you're thinking, right? This guy, <laughs> this guy has picked up, I think, six yellow cards in like 13 appearances. Twan Zabi. Twan Zabi. Yep. And you're looking at Ruben Diaz. He's Man City's future captain. And I'll give you another uh, trait from Ruben Diaz, by the way. You remember that game in Stamford Bridge when Manchester City spanked hmm. Chelsea 3-1? Yeah. When Sterling scored, I think it was Sterling, when Sterling scored the first goal, right? Ruben Diaz wasn't necessarily celebrating. He was gathering all the players around, right? Hmm. And he was telling them how to position themselves, giving tactical instructions. That's what you want, bro. There you That's go. what you want from your youngsters. Who's Look at him. He's at being such dominant. A whereas Tuan Zibi is just... Whereas Tuan Zibi is just a, a part of the wave. He's a deer in a headlight. He's just looking around. Oh my God, what am I supposed to do? But yeah, man. Yeah. It is what it is. We go again against West Ham. Yeah. FA Cup. Mm-hmm. Pogba's yeah. out. Let's see what happens. Jailing's not playing. That's a that's a great sign. <laughs> <laughs> we have a history. We have a history of former players scoring against us. If you remember, Danny Welbeck. Mm, yeah. You know? And it, it, you know what I noticed from Lingard right during his debut. I know that um, the two goals he scored were very fortunate, right? But I think he's a better finisher than Rashford, man. I I think he he because the thing is right. Yeah. Dude, I know it sounds crazy, right? I know it sounds crazy, but I low-key fell, feel as though if you got Lingard in the same positions as Rashford has, he would score the ones that Rashford missed, man. But that's just an observation I made. I don't know. But yeah. yeah um, should we just wrap it up? Like his buddy. No? Yeah, I think so. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think done. let's wrap it up now. Yeah. So thank you for tuning in, guys. If you enjoyed listening to our podcast, then leave a like and please subscribe uh yeah until then catch you guys in the next half peace yeah all right good stuff